Today I'm going to talk about um, uh, a, a weird insect that's a scale insect. Um, it's a wingless, legless insect that feeds through uh, piercing, sucking mouth, mouth parts. It's like a tick for trees, literally. And so this is a, a very common uh, scale in New Hampshire. And I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm going to give you some background and sort of lead you into this uh, scale problem we have here at Bear Brook. And I promise I won't, it's like 12 slides long. <laughs> so I'm not going to grind you into the, into the ground with uh, too much. But so the, here's a European fruit leucanium scale. These are scale insects with no ability to move as adults. They're completely attached by their mouth parts to the bark of the tree. And their basic body function is basically a pump and a filter. And they're incredibly inefficient at, their, at the way that they, that, they, that they draw nutrients from the tree. They're basically drawing sap from the tree, and it's just being, because their pump and filter system is so inefficient, the fluids are just pouring right out the back of the insect. So this is all um, fluid from the tree dripping out of the insect. And so it drips all over the ground, gets all over stuff, and it turns sooty mold. And so you, you see that uh, moldy stuff on bark and mold on trees. and. Most of that is from uh, from scale insects, and ants really like that. So if you have an ant problem, usually you actually have a scale problem. <coughs> so here's the life cycle that you have to memorize. <laughs> it's actually fairly simple. The, the complexity is that it happens two or three times a year. Uh, and so that's what makes it complex. But it's fairly simple in that, that it starts with a female that, that, um, that lays eggs, and then those eggs hatch within that protective covering and then those crawlers come out and then uh, settle down and these are the mouth parts that's penetrating into the bark of the tree. And at that point, that's it, they can't move anymore. And it spends the rest of its life cycle uh, attached to the tree. And so then it just sort of grows in size to the point where it's ready to mate. And interestingly, half of these crawlers turn into males that actually do have wings. They mate with this uh, female and then the cycle starts all over again. So it actually is kind of a weird little <coughs> side spur to the, uh, to the life cycle where the male flies around, mates with the female, and then dies, and then the female starts over again. So in New Hampshire, this happens twice a year, and then down south, it tries to do a third generation, <coughs> down south being Connecticut, Rhode Island. <laughs> uh, and so... What is the long tube thing? This is, these are the mouth parts. That's somebody's rendition of the, uh, the, uh, the tubular mouth parts. Does the, does the mother uh, survive the, the hatching of the... Of the nope. No. So, so, yeah, so, that, so you see they're, they're sort of drawing, depicting the, the live um, female, and she's dying as the eggs are being born, and then she's completely dead as the um, crawlers come out. Okay. Yeah. And then this, this, the male doesn't live either. Once it mates, it, it goes off and croaks. <laughs> I want to know how a male mates with something that's completely covered in a waxy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do the uh, do the males suck the sap out as well, or no? Just the few, just no, the male doesn't do anything but mate and die. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure you're glad you're not a scale insect. <laughs> when um like squirrels and birds like transfer the red scale to other trees? Is it usually at a certain point? In yeah, the it is, and I've got other slides. We'll, we'll, okay. that's a, uh, we'll, come, we'll come back to that. Okay. Um, so here's just, um, just after a couple of cycles, you see what okay. scale insects can do to a tree. And so this is another, um, uh, this is uh, an arbor scale. And the name escapes me for the moment, but it's fairly common in New Hampshire. This is um, an elongate hemlock scale. It uh, is coming in with a delgid, hemlock woolly delgid. It sort of um, comes in a few years afterwards, but um, this is the insect that's causing most of the mortality right now in our woolly delgid stands. Um, and so you can see where the males were. All these white spots were where the males um, were produced, and then all these right here are females. The dark ones are females. So they're similar pests. They are. They're all scale insects, and they're similar in the way they feed. They're phloem feeders. They feed on the um, phloem of the tree. They, um, they're legless, wingless, scale insects, weird um, ticks. Are they part of the uh, kind of Delgid family or something? Well, they're the, in the, um, they're, yeah, they are close to a Delgid. They're 
Scales are homotra, adelgid are hemotra. So there's a slight difference, um, but they're basically the same. The, same. the, the, the difference is that, is that the uh, adelgid will keep legs as adults sometimes. I mean, it's, it's weird, but they're slightly different. Here's a um, red pine scale. This is what we're here today for. Um, completely covered in a protective cover, starting to produce that white flocculence that protects them in the winter, because they feed in the winter. Here are those um, second and third instar uh, nymphs. They're settling down. <coughs> the mouth parts are now attached. They're starting to produce that white flocculence. These are all sort of the, those um, halfway between eggs and adults. And these guys now will turn into adults, now that they're attached. That's magnified right uh, Yeah. This is taken under a microscope. These are, uh, you'll see in the field that you can't see these with your naked eye. You can see the flocculants, but you can't see the actual insect. They're tiny, tiny, tiny. Hundreds of thousands per tree. Here's an old female right here. Uh, and so this is what you're going to see. This is, what, this is what the infestation looks like in the field. Pretty obvious, right? <laughs> so here it is. Uh, see if I can get the uh, laser pointer. See all this white? That is all what we call flocculants poking out from underneath the bark scales. The males, especially the females also, will produce that white woolly stuff to uh, sort of protect themselves from predators and from the winter temperatures. So the story of this scale insect starts down in uh, western Connecticut in the 50s when they first identified it. The scale insect is Eurasian, which means Russian. And there was a World's Fair in, uh, in New York in late, the late 30s. And so it was believed that Russia brought infested uh, red pine with them. Um, and so then it spread east up into Connecticut where they had a big problem. All the red pine in Connecticut, Rhode Island is gone at this point from red pine scale. And Massachusetts is also going through that wave of losing all of their red pine plantations. Um, and so here, here's what the situation is in New Hampshire. Uh, Allenstown. What's the next town north? Well, Deerfield. Deerfield? No, no, Deerfield's not. I was wondering. The town right next to Allenstown is, has a has an infestation, and then up in Loudoun has infestations. And then these are all places that we've looked for it and couldn't find it. So, not a lot of places, but enough to be of concern. This is what it looks like in Massachusetts. Uh, the Quabbin, all their red pine is dying. Uh, this is, happens to be New Bedford, all their pine is dying. And they're losing about 5,000 acres a year in Massachusetts. That's about roughly what they're losing to a red pine scale. Um, this is Bear Brook. This is what um, this orange haze. Do you see that orange haze out through there? Mm -hmm. I hope from your angle you can see it. It's not too clear from my angle. But that's what clued these guys in, these um, Will and, uh, and, um, and Scott. They thought that something looked funny there. And, uh, and so that's dying. The lower half of the canopies were dying from red pine scale. And so it gives off that weird orange cast throughout the stone yeah. And this also is a, a dead giveaway that the trees are on the way out. This is um, red turpentine beetle attacks. So once a red pine stand is attacked uh, by other things and it starts declining, red turpentine beetles start taking over. And usually this is what we get calls about, because it stands out and it's on the ground. These are called pitch tubes. The tree tries to pitch out the insects, and so it creates this glob of pitch where the, uh, where the bark beetle emerges. And so we'll probably see some today. And uh, so there's always a tube running down through the middle of this pitch where the adult insect chews its way out through the pitch. So that's why they call it a tube, pitch tube. Um, and so the inside looks like that. If you pick, pick the bark away, you can see all the galleries from the turpentine beetles. And so you see the blue stain starting. Bark beetles carry a stain with them to inhibit that pitching by the tree. It's called the blue stain. And so it starts spreading around the tree. You know, it spreads wherever the insects are attacking. That's what the larvae looks like. You can see there's tons of larvae. And so this is the cross section. You can start to see, you can see blue stain starting in several different places. It's a real problem for foresters because it, it affects the value of the tree. Um, 
people cutting saw logs don't really like to see blue stain on there. The most valuable part of the tree. And so that's it for me for, for the insect stuff. If um, anybody has questions.